The Sierra Nevada is really in an unsustainable state. We know that it's, it's burning. Uh, every year we get wildfires that consume tens to hundreds of thousands of acres. Over 100 million trees that suffered mortality, tree deaths during the last uh, most recent drought. Our institute addresses resource management challenges in the region and also enables our faculty and students to use the region as a natural laboratory for research. My research is looking at the water balance of the Sierra Nevada. I'm very interested in knowing what California's water supply is going to be. So we're very interested when precipitation comes down, either as snow or as rain, how much of that actually ends up in the river. We can make better decisions if we understand the, the system well. And the problem with working up in the mountains is that it's very difficult to get measurements. And we've been sprinkling devices such as wireless sensor network around the Sierra Nevada um, because we can actually measure snow depth using this instrument. Um, we tend to have on it, we can we radio out the, the signal so we have it in real time. We also have information, other measurements such as relative humidity and temperature so we can actually start doing energy balance calculations as well. I'm a plant biologist and I'm interested in the way that plants and particularly trees are responding to environmental change. So climate has already shifted a good bit in California since the early 20th century. Most of the state has gotten hotter. The northern part of the state is getting more precipitation than it used to. The southern part is getting less. And all of that can have some profound impacts on tree populations. As many people know, during the recent drought in 2012 to 2016, there was a lot of tree mortality uh, because this drought was one of the most severe that's been seen in the last thousand years. Uh, but those types of droughts are expected to become uh, more common in the future, and so those types of events may repeat. And even when you don't get these dramatic mortality events, the increases in temperature and drought have been leading to higher mortality just on an average year in both adults and uh, seedling trees uh, in many areas of the West. And that coupled with the increase in wildfires from drier conditions raises a lot of concerns that forests may not be able to regenerate themselves, that the young trees uh, will not be able to grow up fast enough to replace older trees that are dying. And that, of course, can have a lot of uh, implications for carbon storage in these forests, for habitat, and for any other uses of these forest lands. So knowing how this variation is distributed in space, as well as what genetic variants are causing these differences between individuals, might allow us to better choose seed sources when we're reforesting after events like wildfires that will be better able to tolerate the conditions that we're going to see in the future. In my lab, we study soil organic matter dynamics, which is to say that uh, we study the biogeochemical cycles of carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, in particular how those cycles are affected by physical perturbations in the environment, such as erosion, fire, or climate change, and focus in particular on how these changes then affect the ability of the soil system to store and stabilize uh, carbon and organic matter. One of the most important challenges facing humanity right now is soil degradation. And soil use and degradation just in the last 200 years or so has released 12 times more carbon to the atmosphere compared to the rate at which we're now annually releasing carbon. Some of the best ways that we can improve are reduce tillage, reduce disturbance from agricultural practices overall, reducing excessive use of agricultural chemicals, stopping deforestation, and putting back forests whenever possible. Uh, promoting planting of per deep-rooted perennial plants. All of those are proven methods that we've shown over the years that they can increase the amount of carbon stored in soil. I look at the historical experience of wildfire and what's driven extreme wildfires in the recent decades. And that includes changes in temperature, changes in precipitation, changes in snowmelt timing, changes in season length. And then we use that information to understand how fire may have responded in the past to climate and how it may respond in the future to climate. So best case for California is that we can aggressively manage our forests to make them much more resilient to climate change and get the fire out of the forest canopy and more often at the surface and lower intensity so the trees survive, maintain a stable carbon reservoir for the next century and sort of support both adaptation and mitigation. 
I think the thing that's important for people to keep in mind is not that they should despair and throw up their hands and say nothing can be done. It's that there are things that we don't know how to change. And there, but there are things that we can change. So we can't really dramatically affect the climate change that we're going to experience in the next couple to few decades. But we can dramatically change the prognosis for our children. I'm very happy to have such a great, great group of faculty here in the Sierra Nevada Research Institute. And we can do great things for restoring the Sierra Nevada and bringing more sustainability to our, our region. 